Well, Ron, these days it seems like the hot issue is Obama's socialized medical bill, or do we call it a fascist medical bill, or interventionist medical bill? I, I don't know, but it involves vastly increasing the already horrible amount of government intervention in the medical system. But it looks like there's so much opposition, is he going to get it through? You know, one, one thing we can agree on, it's not a free market approach <laughs> to, to, to medicine. Uh, I don't think he'll get the whole thing through. You know, looking back at what's happened uh, with my uh, bit of experience in Washington is they never get everything, but they always get a bunch. And I imagine he's going to keep moving us. But they've been doing this for maybe 50 years. Incrementalism. American people expect, accept incrementalism. But, you know, if in the 1940s or 50s they say, we want social health care, the American people would rebel. Even today they resent being socialized medicine and they're rebelling, mm -hmm. but they're going to take a little bit more and they'll keep moving. So I think they're going to move in that direction. And, you know, Republicans are doing a, a pretty good job in, a, in opposing it, but the Democrats have more votes. Uh, but, you know, the, the real tragedy is, is whether you have the Republicans in charge or the Democrats in charge, you know what happens. It still marches on. I mean, look at what happened under Bush. We had the prescription drug program and uh, it sailed right through and, and here we go. We're even looking for a much uh, greater influence from government. So unfortunately, I don't think this is going to be much benefit to our patients. And of course, you're right about both parties having increased government intervention in medicine. You've pointed out that with Hill Burton, it started yeah, with the Eisenhower administration what? in the 50s. Whereas Truman, even at the height of his popularity, could not get a socialized medicine bill through. Right. Yet Eisenhower did it, of course, LBJ with Medicare and Medicaid, Nixon with the HMOs and Healthcare Financing Administration, and, and uh, Reagan increased <laughs> intervention in medical care, and Clinton, and so I guess Obama is going to just continue on that same path. So you can understand and empathize with those people who are getting angry, especially if they been introduced to uh, free markets and believe in liberty and believe in the Constitution, why they'd be angry. And I think it's very justified that uh, people are upset and angry. And uh, hopefully this is a healthy sign that people are starting to realize that uh, the federal government can't deliver. And ultimately, I think that's what our, uh, our country is facing, a government that can't deliver. But that should be a very positive thing for us. If we okay. come out of it without violence, I think this could be very helpful to us. No, I think it's I think it's thrilling. Of course, the government uses only violence, right? I mean, that's how they get their medical bill through. If you don't obey, if you don't pay their taxes, yeah. they use violence against you. But the opposition, no, they're just arguing against these yeah, things. Yeah, they, they have a lot of guns that they use. You know, I argue that we should have gun control on <laughs> all the federal, <laughs> federal bureaucrats. I think we have 100,000 federal bureaucrats who carry guns now. When you think of all the agencies of government, they're permitted to, to, uh, to carry guns. And, of course, sometimes if one individual American have guns, the left goes nuts. <laughs> you know, what? Somebody has a gun? <laughs> and of course, these guys can bring them on planes. They can carry them anywhere. Yeah. Uh, and state law doesn't apply to them. They're, they sail above it. That, that's right, and that's what should uh, really scare us. What scares me is the use of the gun to take away our liberties. You know, even though they're not shooting us, the gun is always behind everything that they do. And... Uh, just, just the idea of paying for this medical program. Where are they going to get the money? It's all the use of force and guns. They go to the IRS and then, of course, they borrow money and they pay interest on this money. And then they use force, a, a sinister tax like inflation. The Fed prints the money. And they, don't, they haven't talked that much about paying for this bill. They, Obama talks about all these good things that are going to come from it. But I don't even think the conservatives have done a real good job in talking about the real cost of this thing, you know, uh, wh where does this come from? And uh, it, what amazes me is we, we have, uh, we're living in a period of time now where the national debt is going up $2 trillion this year. And it doesn't hardly even phase them to talk about another program they claim is going to be a trillion, but you know that have you ever seen a government program proposed to cost a, a, a billion or two billion or ten billion not be two or three times yeah. more? So this is not going to cost a trillion dollars because they can't know because costs are always going to go up. You know, so what what they're projecting, I mean, their, their programs, their computers are telling, well, everything is going to cost this much. Oh, yes, but we're going to get rid of waste and fraud, and, and that's how they're going to pay for it. I also like the fact that they claim they're going to cut costs. I mean, government loves spending money. They sort of exist to spend money. So when in, in human history has any government ever cut the cost of anything? No, and uh, when you think about 
how much the bureaucracy costs in, in lost time and in efficiency, but the little cost of paying these people. And who thinks for a minute there'll be less federal bureaucrats involved in this program? You know, the one thing that bothers me is going to involve some bureaucrats, and that is this electronic surveillance of all the medical records. Mm. You know, the, the, uh, the procedure's already in place. They've gotten the authority to set up the medical documentation of electronic uh, records. Yeah. In this bill, if it passed, has $50 billion in there. So if anybody cares about medical privacy, it's, it's essentially gone. This HIPAA thing that came up a few years ago, it was, it was designed. Trick. Yeah, it was made everything accessible to the government yeah. Yeah. and to the big insurance companies. In the name of privacy. In, of in the name of privacy. Right. And now, now they're talking about making it wrong. What they want to do is monitor every single transaction, everything the patient does, everything the nurse does, everything the, the doctor does, and mm -hmm. how many pills have been prescribed, and monitor this and review everything. Uh, to find out if everybody's doing the right thing. And, and they think that they're going to bring down the cost. I, I, I just, it, it, it bewilders me to think that anybody could believe this stuff. And who can doubt that your medical records will be part of your dossier to be accessible to the Department of Homeland Security, maybe to every cop on the beat. Uh, they're going to have all that information on you, your financial information, legal information, medical information. Yeah, and you know that uh, under the HIPAA law, they explicitly say that this you're protected unless the government needs these records for health matters. And, and think about all the hype on this flu, uh, flu uh, oh this yeah. uh, swine flu, and they're getting ready for that. And, and are we going to have mandatory uh, inoculations and all this? And, and you're going to be in a computer. Oh, Joe Blow, he didn't get his shot. You know, round him up. Yeah. So uh, it, it's scary stuff, you know. It, it looks like it'll make uh, 1984 look attractive one of these days. And it sure was interesting how disappointed, openly disappointed they were when the swine flu business didn't bloom into a, the full-fledged epidemic they were hoping for. No, and they're they're still sort of hoping for. Oh yeah, we're trying we're trying to do this and yeah. and all, but. Uh, and I guess you do remember a little bit about 1976 when we were worried yeah. about you. You remember Jerry Larry Ford, McDonald yes. and I voting against yes. that thing. And uh, more people died from the inoculation than they did from the flu. But, you know, this isn't... I, I never want to belittle the principle of inoculations. I think people get way, way too many, and we break down our immune, immune system. Mm -hmm. But the whole idea, if it's a shot that's good or bad... Why is it that it has to be massive? And why does it have to be everybody? Why does it have to be the government? Why can't the parents make these decisions? Why can't the doctors make these decisions on whether somebody has to get a flu shot? And you can argue the pros and cons of that, but this idea that there's going to be a government decision, uh, you know, the federal government's going to make the decision, and, of course, drug companies tend to be involved as well. Oh, oh boy, I guess it's going to be a big customer if I can do a flu shot for everybody in the country. And of course, this always leaks into foreign policy, it seems to, given the empire. So I remember when the Ford administration used the swine flu virus to attempt to infect all the farm animals in Cuba <laughs> in an act of germ warfare, right? We'd call it an act of terrorism today yeah. if somebody else were doing it other than uh, the no, U.S. But that's verging on conspiracy. <laughs> 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 then you're telling the truth, <laughs> telling the truth about what our CIA has done over the years. You know, uh, you might find out that... Uh, not too, not in, in recent years or decades, I mean, did this survey and found out that we've attempted over 50 assassination of world, you know, of, of government yes. leaders. Uh, that's, uh, so whether it's the health matters or oil or whatever, uh, I think we're way too much involved. So. That's for sure. Ron, thanks so much. Okay, good. Good to talk to you, Lou. Good to talk to you.